and welcome to a millinery restoration and history video. My name is Ilona, I am a milliner based in London and today I'm going to be showing you how I freshened up this vintage hat that I'm wearing right now. I'll also share a little bit of information about the milliner who made it originally. I treated myself to this vintage 1960s hat a couple of months ago and it was an absolute steal from eBay. It didn't need much restoration work at all, just a little refresh to make sure it keeps living and looking its best self. Just remember, this is my preferred method, there is no right or wrong way, just whatever works for you. Let's gather the materials and get started. The very first thing I always do when restoring or refreshing a vintage hat is to take out the label and lining. This was pretty easy with this particular hat. The lining was stitched to the straw behind the ribbon with a simple basting stitch. The Petersham ribbon, however, was a little more tedious. It had been machine stitched using a chain stitch, which is beautiful but so difficult to unpick. Once I'd got the lining and Petersham off, I had a big surprise. Why yes, that is Dionette you see under the parasisal. I had never seen this before and would have thought it was totally unnecessary. However, I have since learnt that this was quite common in mid-century straw hats. I decided that I wanted to wash the ribbon and lining so that I can reuse it. I could have put in a new set, but I didn't want anything to go to waste. And besides, I didn't have a spare bit of new Petersham in my ribbon box anyway. I'm hand washing the lining and ribbon in a bowl of cold water with some non-biological detergent. Now, very stupidly, while I was unpicking the ribbon, I managed to also unpick the row of stitches that was holding the foundation of the Dior net to the parasisal straw. So I'm just quickly going to stitch that back together using my 1970s Frister Rossmann Panda 6 MK2 machine set to a plain straight stitch. While I'm ironing the lining, I'll tell you about how I dried out the Petersham ribbon. This hat was sized at 55 centimeters, but my head size is 54. So to shrink down the Petersham, I put it onto a 54 centimeter crown block and slightly steamed it while it was still wet. I then let it dry in the sun, which had the added benefit of bleaching some yellow stains out of the old Petersham. I forgot to get a shot of this, so please forgive me and imagine the Petersham having a lovely time sunbathing. On to the trim. Once taking it off, I discovered that it wasn't as simple as five separate loops, but actually four, with one spiralled into two. This makes a lot of sense, as it makes the loops less fiddly to work with. I ironed them out and then rolled them back up into loops. This is also when I realised that the red bits of ribbon weren't ribbon at all. They were very thin strips of silk cut on the bias and folded over. Once again, it was very silly of me to have assumed they were ribbons, as being bias strips they follow the curves and indents of the hat much better than a ribbon ever could. And now onto the main most important bit of restoration work, the dedenting. I didn't want to go in with steam, as my steamer doesn't have a spout nozzle and I would risk deforming the entire hat. So I used a medium hot dry iron with a pressing cloth underneath. You can see that with my left hand I'm pushing the pressing cloth from the inside of the hat against the iron on the outside. This means that I have complete control over how much of the straw the iron is touching and I can carefully and patiently smooth out all the dents and dimples. Back to the surprise bias strips, I decided I would use some PVA stiffener to stick down the edges towards the centre top of the hat where they were coming loose. I'm using the glue as that is how they were all attached. Yet another surprise for me as I had previously assumed they would have been stitched for extra security, but apparently glue was enough. Ah, my Petersham has finished basking in the sun, so let me take it off and tell you what I could find out about Edna Wallace, the milliner who made this hat. Edna is a difficult lady to pin down. A quick Google search throws up a film credit on IMDB for making hats for the film Celia in 1949 for the leading actress, High Hazel. This was a bit of a dead end in my research as I couldn't find any copy of this film to watch. I would have absolutely loved to have seen it. I could not find a lot of information about Edna Wallace on the internet at all. I was able to trace through business records at the London Gazette to find out about the liquidation of her business due to retirement in 1988 or 1989. Edna had registered two businesses, one being Edna Wallace Limited, which was incorporated in 1930, 
and the other being Edna Wallace Mr Pat Limited. I have no idea why she would have registered two businesses. Perhaps if any of you watching know how business works, you could tell me why someone might want to do this in the comments below. I was also able to find her London shop address, but more on this later. Nope, changed my mind, more on this right now. Here I am posing at Deering Street, just off of New Bond Street in central London. I am so excited to be here. I have styled my hat with a vintage handbag, my favourite white leather Italian sandals and a red cotton lawn early 60s style dress. Edna's business address was at number 23, which was quite easy to find with its beautiful green metal painted front. It's now an art gallery, so let's go in and visit. What happened in the 70s? So these are post hat. An abstract hat. So we've just been to the gallery and apparently toast over here. That used to be McCulloch and Wallace. Obviously spelt differently, not related, but the um, the haberdashery shop which is now on Poland Street. So isn't that fun? <laughs> Makes sense to have your milliners next to your haberdashers. <laughs> I also managed to find a few job listings placed in the West London Observer. An advert on the 6th of August 1946 asks for a milliner's assistant, copyist and outworker for a high-class West End workroom with good wages and five days a week. I would definitely apply if I could. Another job advert placed on the 26th of February 1954 advertised for a millinery outworker. From this, I can assume that her business was doing well between these years if she needed assistance. Other than what I've already mentioned, Edna's internet footprint is pretty non-existent. Apart from the copious amounts of hats listed for sale on eBay, Etsy and even on Gumtree. If you search all these places, lots of hats come up for sale. However, there's a problem with some of these listings. Some people confuse the milliner with the American actress Edna Wallace Hopper. These two ladies are not the same person. Beware for overpaying for an Edna Wallace hat if the seller has said it was made by the American actress and listed it for a ridiculous price. And now that's the end of the tangible information, here's some of my speculations. From what I could figure out, I think Edna made hats under three slightly different labels, modeled by Edna Wallace, tricky by Edna Wallace, and Paris-inspired Frenchie by Edna Wallace. Looking at her hat at the Manchester Art Gallery, I assumed that the modeled label must have been a little more high-end, as couture millinery is often referred to as model millinery. Tricky must have been a high street label as there are so many hats in circulation with this particular label. The Frenchy label was probably aimed at the younger generation as the hats with this label are a little more fun and casual in bright bubblegum colours. What stands out for me about her style is that it is mainly big bubble berets and pillboxes with her signature trim seeming to be a loopy drapey thing or voluminous pleating. Well, wasn't that an exciting outing? I'd like to thank the wonderful people at the Anna Lee Judah Fine Art Gallery for being so accommodating to me while I was filming. Back to the restoration now. I'm pinning in my Petersham. As I need to size the hat down by one centimeter, I've measured and marked both the Petersham and the hat edge at each quarter. This way, I can evenly distribute the fullness of the hat into the small Petersham band. If you're a seamstress, think of this like trying to sew together a particularly pesky sleeve with too much ease. I could sew it back on by hand, but I don't have time for this today, so instead I'm going to do as Edna did and machine it. I've taken off the flat bed attachment and positioned the machine so that it's almost hanging off the table. This allows me to hook my hat onto the needle plate without damaging and squashing the shape. Once again, this is just like a sleeve. Who knew hats and sleeves had so much in common? It's time to proudly sew Edna's tricky label back on. I've really enjoyed getting to know Edna and her millinery. I hope to find out more about her in the future. With the label on, the trim goes back on next, and then the lining, which did shrink a little while I was ironing it. That's why the hat looks shallower from the inside now, but I don't mind. At least I didn't have to remake a lining. That's my least favorite part of hat making. As usual, I'm tying the thread off with a loopy knot and for extra security, I'm going to add a comb to the front of the hat. I'm sure Edna won't mind. Perhaps someone out there can help me with more information. I would love to find out more about Edna. I think her hats are so fabulous. 
If you can help me, please get in touch. I would absolutely love to hear from you. If you also like restoring and bringing life to vintage hats, share your process with me on Instagram at Violona Millinery. I'd love to see all your creations. If you've enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe. This really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bubble berries and pillboxes. Bubble berry, this is what a bubble berry is. Yeah, big bubble berries. Berries, berries, big bubble berries. Think French. Oh, berries. Right. Big bubble berry. Mm -hmm. Internet movie database. Ah, I always did wonder why did I think it was a beady, like a bidet.